this uh, Meester pool here. Um, I'm going to refer back to the to the other video that I made earlier, um, t titled "My Use of Animals," and I've given it considerable amount of thought since I've made that video. I have not um, I've not eaten any eggs. I've not eaten any cheese. I've not eaten any honey. I've not eaten any meat of any kind from either fish, bird, any kind of animal flesh I have not eaten since I've made since I made that video. And you can see there's a date on it. Um, what I'm going to show you is typical kinds of food that I eat on a regular basis. Um, the reason I'm wearing the safety glasses is because I'm going to I'm going to be open I'm going to be further opening up this coconut. As you can see it's it's real sharp. So you got to you know so you got to be careful when you when you open a coconut. Coconut is actually one of the best foods for you. It actually has more nutrient value, and it has electrolytes in it. So you could, if you were stuck on a desert island, you could survive on coconuts. That's what I heard. That's what you know. I've heard from survivalists. Um, I think it was um, uh, Survivor Man mentioned that in one of his videos. Um, I think maybe even Bear, Bear Grylls also mentioned that. But this is this is what I eat on a regular basis. Now what I do is I take nuts, an assortment of nuts, like in here there's walnuts, um, sunflower seeds, um, sesame seeds, um, sliced almonds, dried almonds, and, and pumpkin seeds. And I, my wife, she does, she cooks them, puts them in a pan, and, and then roasts them till they're like crispy brown. And put you know I put a little olive oil in there. Then I you know I I also eat organic carrots. Unfortunately, I did not grow this myself. I eat, I, am, I am trying to grow most of my own vegetables where I live. I really wish I had a greenhouse because the the climate here is really it's not sunny a lot. So it would be advantageous to grow indoors. And here's this is what I use as a coffee creamer. Um, I like coffee. You know it's kind of a comforting something I enjoy and because of the, the weather and the climate here it's dark always you know cloudy and that so I drink a lot of coffee and I, I buy the organic um, soy creamer and this is farmer owned it's, you know all USD organic USDA organic if that means anything to you um, now here's the other the other things that are meat good meat substitutes these are called tofurkey dogs and you might be able to get, if there's a Craigers Market near you or you have a, um, a co-op community store or vegetable or a, a produce store and or they sell organic, a lot of organics there, they have like, you know, uh, these are real good. They're made out of soy and they're, they're uh, flavored for like a meat flavor. Here's the other um, lunch meats that are made from tofu. And I, I find them flavorable. I put them on bread, you know, and, and, and I usually buy the, the, the dense bread that's the grainy bread. Um, it's called uh, um, Good for Life bread. It's, it has the Ezek quotes Ezekiel on the front. I don't have that, but I have that in my other video on the, my other my other favorite veg, veg and foods. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I could eat more of this, but it's, this is hard to find in the store fresh. I've had more problems. I'll go in and I'll buy a coconut and I'll crack it open and it's spoiled. So it's something you gotta, then they don't date it. There's no date stamp on coconut. So that's one thing I've, I'm very fortunate and happy when I get a coconut and I open it up and it's fresh and it's sweet. So that's, and here's my coffee that I'm drinking. This is not, this is, this is what I try to drink most of the time for coffee. And this, this is a real, this is really expensive. This is like, between ten and twelve dollars for this is this is organic instant coffee, and you know it has the it has a little blurb on it that talks about uh, this premium coffee beans used in creating Mount Hagen organic freeze dried coffee are carefully selected and harvested in cooperation with organic growers who provide a safe social and economic environment for their workers. In doing so, Mount Hagen assists in supporting organic growing methods and sustainably sustainability of the environment so that's that's my what I drink this is and then I have apple trees in the in the winter I'll leave those apples on there and then eat them um, and they stay fresh you know you when you have an apple tree it's a nice thing about growing apples is that you can leave the apples out 
and they won't spoil in the winter time. So it's one that fell off, so I know it's a little sweet. The raccoons eat them too. If you have wild animals in your area, plant apple trees, it'll, it'll attract wild animals. If you like, if you want wild animals or like wild animals. So I do. I like the, you know, squirrels and raccoons. And unfortunately, I, I didn't, you're, sp you're supposed to, um, uh, you're supposed to remove, if you have a lot of blooms, too many blooms, you're supposed to pick them off so you only have a few. That way your apples will be bigger. But I've, I'm getting small apples on this tree. So I left the blooms on there when it was blooming. So I'll have a lot of small apples. And they're, they're tart. There's, there's, a, there's a skin on them, you know. So they're not like the store-bought apples. They have, they have a considerable, um, the flavor is better. When you grow your own food, the, the food tastes better. There's more flavor in the food for uh, what I found when I grow my own food and eat it. It tastes better. And it's healthier for you, too. You know what's in it since you've been, you've been taking care of the plants. You've been growing it yourself, so you know there's no weird things that are being sprayed on it. Very good. So, I wish I could show you my, my midsection. I've lost... A lot of the fat around my, around this part of my body, my belly fat, has gone away. I wish I could take my shirt off and show you, but you know, I'm cold out here. So anyhow, I'm trying to stick with a vegan diet. I'm, you know, when I was when I was in my early teens and twenties, I grew up in a Roman Catholic, you know family in the 60s, you know, in Southern California. We never were told in, in, in our religion class or our, or our social sciences class or anything in school about veganism or vegetarianism or vegetarian diet. I think I had a morality class, but it was more about morals as far as being, you know, not being promiscuous, you know, being chaste, not being sexually um, being, you know, the 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 the, guy, the the person that taught the class, I think they were more concerned with people's sexual behavior, not getting, you know, the venereal diseases and getting pregnancies in high school more than anything else. So there was never really any discussion about animals or uh, um, ethical farming or where your food comes from and the ethics of the, you know, animal husbandry, raising animals for for meat. So I have to confess, I enjoyed, I ate a lot of chicken sandwiches, I ate a lot of pork and bacon and, and hamburgers when I was a youngster. Uh, because it was only until I really started thinking about the vegetarianism when someone I knew, I worked for, the, his wife prepared a vegetarian meal. And I thought it was really, 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 really satisfying to me. It was almost like the, it was more of a normal thing. To, it felt better for me when I ate that start eating that way but I really didn't think about animal welfare or the ethics of the animals how the animals were raised and how they were treated so that as and then I, I did get into I, I, I was in a I was went to a meeting at the college it was a PETA meeting and that's what kind of really where I where my mindset changed a lot but I still didn't practice um, a, a meat free animal products free diet um, it's, it's really, if you're in an environment where everybody eats meat, if you live near a lot of ranches and where there's a lot of cows and cattle and, and there's, there's, you know, barbecuing going on everywhere and there's people that are, have raising chickens and there's a lot of meat eating going on around you in the area, the community that you live in, it's very, very difficult to be a vegetarian. It's, and, it, and if you live in a northern area where there's a lot of game and hunting and people to rely upon going out and, and, and hunting for meat, like getting seal meat or, or getting a caribou or, or bringing down a, 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 an elk or, or a deer and then relying on that for most of the meat for eating for survival, it's, it's hard. It's, you can't, how can you be vegetarian also if you live, you know, in the very northern areas? Well, that's another that's another issue with it uh, I, I would encourage people out there if you're thinking about choosing veganism because it's, it was ethics because of the ethical reasons that's the best 
You know, you think about the other animals that are out there that have to, you know, like what I've explained in my other videos. So I, I won't take up any more of your time. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. Bye.